Hey, I'm Ryan with Warner Discovers, and today we're going to talk about the features that come with the Amplify. Now, I did an unboxing video the other day, but now I'm going to walk through some of the things that come along with the software and the features that you get along with having the Amplify in your home. So once you have the Amplify set up, you have your Ethernet cable hooked up to your network, you're able to access it via your phone or your laptop or your tablet. You can go to amplify.local and it will bring you to the web browser as you see here. I have one speaker hooked up to zone one and this other speaker hooked up to zone two so that we can just easily demonstrate the capabilities of the system. Now you can easily hook up up to six zones to the Amplify as well as the six pre-outs. The pre-outs can actually be used in combination with the amplified zones. So for example, if you had this speaker and this speaker hooked up to one zone, you could actually have two subs, a left sub and a right sub, or actually have more speakers than just the allotted pair for each zone. So if we look at the Amplify website, you can see here, it's a very simple, basic web GUI that you can easily access from multiple devices. Um, what you see at the top is the four sources that you can do. So you can basically have four different audio sources running at the same time going to the zones that you'd like them to go to. Another thing to note is that the digital SPDIF or the 3.5 millimeter is not implemented as an input yet, but you'll be able to put in one or the other into any of these inputs. So you can see here at the top, you have your four sources. One, just as an example, I have as an internet radio, two I have as another internet radio, three I have just as an airplay input, and four isn't really set to anything right now. But you kinda gotta think about it in terms of sources. Uh, it takes a little getting used to to understand sort of the layout and what to expect between the zones and the groups and the sources and the inputs, and then it kinda just makes sense. So in this example, in the first one, we have, for example, the internet radio, and right here I have one zone that's added to this for Ryan's office. You can select different zones, you can select your groups or your individual zones, and they'll get added here. If you have a zone in another source, then it will get moved from the other source. So if I have Ryan's office over here and I add Ryan's office over here, it'll switch over to the group zone called second floor, and you can see it's gone from the original source. If we go over into the settings, you can see here that we have multiple selections, inputs, zones, groups, configuration and reset, updates. So in the inputs, this is the area where you can manage all your media that is coming into the Amplify before going out to your zones. So here you have input one, input two, input three, input four. These are just the inputs on the back of the device. And then you have internet radio. This is Groove Salad that was just added automatically. We have some that I just added manually. So I added a AirPlay one called Amplify One, a guest room AirPlay, and then four different Spotify sources. Additionally, other internet radios, I added Tomorrow One World Radio, BBC Radio One. And so if you go into here, you can see that you can add a new stream. You can have many streams. I'm not sure the limit but you can add an AirPlay device, DLNA, FM radio station, internet radio station, Pandora, PlexAmp, and Spotify. One thing to note with PlexAmp, they're actually having an issue at the moment where the PlexAmp support is only for 64-bit support, so they actually need to update their Amplify software to support that, but that is currently being worked on. But if we go to the AirPlay, you can select your stream name. If we go to the DLNA, you can select your stream name an FM radio station, you're able to set your frequency, whatever you'd like, only supported by an external dongle that you have. For an internet radio station, it's very convenient because you can actually just search by a station if you're familiar with a station. You can put it in manual station via URL. So I added BBC Radio 1. If you search your stations, it'll actually give you some selections to select which one you'd like. It'll pre-fill those for you. I haven't tried Pandora out yet, but you'll be able to enter your username and password information here and select the Pandora station that you'd like. With the Plex AMP, when they are able to fix it, you can put in your authentication token and your Plex information, and you'll be able to stream your local music files. And then finally, for your Spotify device, you can add multiple Spotify devices to stream to. 
Moving on to your zones, These, this is your main zone management. So in here, you'll be able to configure all your zones, whether it's for one Amplify or multiples. So in here, you can see that I have set in here just Ryan's office for zone one. And then for zone two, I have guest room. And you can set the minimum volume, your maximum volume, and then you can finally disable a zone. And then finally for zone three, four, five, and six, I just have it set as the default for now. For groups, you can add groups. So if you wanna add multiple zones into one entity, you can specify them here. As you can see, I did everywhere. So that's all of the zones. So you can go in here and check all of them for the second floor. I just did these two. So if I go into another source and I happen to add both of those zones, they'll appear here as second floor automatically. Configuration and reset, you can upload a configuration from here. You can download your current configuration and can, just in case anything, if you need a backup or if you need to move it onto another device. You can reset the factory default, reset the hardware, reboot the hardware, and then finally you can shut down the device. So it's convenient that they have all these utility options in here. And then finally updates, you can come in here, check for an update and it'll show you the latest update and all the release notes. And you can start the update and run through the updater here and it'll show you all the system logs that'll come through, which is pretty nice. And then one last thing to show you in here is the dropdown. You can actually do a mute all. So if you're running multiple streams at, at different times, you can actually come in here and just apply. And then once you mute all of those, you can click restore last config to actually get it right back to where it was before. So let's go ahead and show you how this works. So in this example, I have the BBC Radio 1 Internet Radio selected, and I'm gonna select Ryan's office. And so you can see here on the front, it's actually muted. Oh, hang on a sec, did you work for MI6? <laughs> I wish, yeah. No, I couldn't possibly talk. Do you usually take your major phone to the phone? The thing is, I feel like Jamie... So you can see the light light up, the radio comes on and you can hear it in that zone. Now let's go ahead and add this zone. So you can see now that the second floor shows up and I'll go ahead and unmute you, you the you guest room. You're saying to be more of a killing machine than me. Yeah, to be fair, Jane, I think you actually might be slightly stronger. So yeah, that is off. So you can see there, it's just easy to add another zone, throw it in and it's good to go. And if you actually play it on both at the same time. He says, I have given it a lot of thoughts. Mm -hmm. However, and I'm really sorry, Jamie, but I do have to say something. It's hard to hear on the video, but you can hear that they're both you equally playing. Another... Well, and then you can also adjust the volume. I actually don't have a choice. Yeah. Why is that? Because I really came to this podcast. Really. You can adjust the volume individually or together based on the group. And so if you wanted to play two separate sources in here, what would be good is you would basically choose your source, select your other source. So say I want to stream from Spotify and say I wanna to listen to that in my office. So anything that streams to that Amplify one, Spotify is gonna play on there. And then anything playing on here is just going to play the BBC Radio 1. So if I go ahead and open my phone and I go to my Spotify and then I'll just play Amplify 1 shows up right here in my devices and I can now hear it on my office. And so I can adjust in here. So I pause it. I can see the music that was playing right here. I can start it back up. And I have, now I have these simultaneously. <laughs> and same thing for AirPlay. So say we want to use AirPlay instead, we switch it over to Amplify 1 on AirPlay. And I have that same song going right here. So I go onto my phone, I go into AirPlay, 
And I can see in here from the AirPlay dropdown, they have Amplify One. And you can see there that the AirPlay Play is there. So that should give you a good overview of the audio and the configuration and the settings on the local Amplify site. It's easy to go on there from your computer or your phone and easily change things up. But one thing that's interesting is the Amplify wall panel. So let's go take a look at that and see how that connects in with this system. Okay, so we're up here in my office. I have the Amplify hooked up to my wall switch. It's just a single gang US outlet. And you can see here that we have the panel, which is that sawn off smart switch. There's two buttons here on the bottom. And then you have different configuration options in here. With both these switches, you can actually control physical line out. So for example, this one's hooked up to the ceiling light. This one isn't hooked up to anything, but it's actually kind of nice because that actually has MQTT support. So any of these button presses can be sent to any of your MQ MQTT brokers, for example. So my home assistant has the MQTT broker running and listening. So I can actually hook up switch number two to my Hue lamp. So when I go to push this, it'll actually turn off and on the Hue lamp. So then if we look at the actual GUI here, you can actually, you can see it's just a little bit different. You can see what was re recently played in this zone. When you're looking at this, it's mainly just for one zone. So if you go into the settings, you can actually see the zone slash group at the top. So you can actually select your different zones in here. So you can see those zones that I was talking about. You have Ryan's office, the guest room, zone three, four, five, and six. So we're gonna use Ryan's office. In the settings, you have an update. You have the connection, which is the Wi-Fi information. And then you have advanced, factory reset, pre-releases, your brightness, reboot. And then in here, you can actually see the MQTT information and the topic, which is on there. So each of the topics for the different panels, if you had multiple. So now if we're looking at this, you can see that right now we have the Amplify 1 hooked up to AirPlay, but we can actually see the other things that I named in here. So if we switch back to Tomorrow Land One World Radio, it's playing on Source Two. So I don't think I don't know if you can hear that, but that's playing downstairs. So it's mainly for like one zone configuration. You can change which source you want it on to play with. And then if you do go into the settings, you can change your zone to change certain information like pausing or what have you. Or if you want to use a group, for example, you have different groups in here everywhere, second floor. So it's just nice to have for the one zone, you come in the room, you just want to play something, configure the volume or so on, or turn on and off your switches. It's really convenient. And then one thing I wanted to show you was the front panel here. You can actually see the information about the CPU, the memory, the disk, the IP address, the local host name, the password, and your sources. So you can see here the sources, BBC Radio 1, Tomorrowland, the guest room. Those are what's taking up three of the sources. And then you can see at the bottom, the individual volumes, which is kind of nice. You're gonna actually see how each individual zone's volume is. And then of course on the front, the zones that are currently on. And if you mute all of the zones, it will go into a standby mode with the red light. So that's a look at the wall panel and the front display panel. We also walked through the Amplify software slash web. There's also APIs that they support for configuring your Amplify. They also have the Home Assistant plugin, which you can do similar API interactions through Home Assistant for automation and so forth. So I'm hoping to play around with that they also have in the back USB ports and HDMI out, so you can easily connect a keyboard and a mouse and a monitor. So it'll actually give you a Linux desktop to play with and develop on if you'd like to develop with them for the Amplify software. Again, to note, all of their firmware, all their hardware, all their software is open source. They're currently working on bug fixes like the Plex and getting the 3.5 millimeter and, and optical in working for inputs on their software. I definitely recommend checking out their GitHub and seeing what they have to offer. Again, they've been really responsive and interactive with the community, which is great. So I hope this was helpful for you to give a walkthrough of the features and things that the Amplify unit has to offer. And I hope soon to get out of this kitchen situation and have some speakers around the house. 
but I hope for you that this was helpful to demonstrate what it has to offer. Thanks for watching.